Hello and welcome to episode 6, A New Hope 2, from the SIPGRAPI 2021 course on the plane-based geometric algebra. My name is still Steven and in this programming episode we will be implementing the rigid body dynamics engine that we've been talking about before. So you may remember this slide, which was the overview of how rigid body dynamics would work in an n-dimensional setup. And it has a, a lot of stuff on there, but really this orange box down here is all you need to know to get the implementation going. Now we want to do this implementation in a dimension agnostic way. And to do that, we will actually need to create a dimension agnostic rigid body. So we want to have this little square uh, hanging on a string uh, with Hooke's law and then we want to be able to change the number of dimensions so I don't want to define a square and a cube separately I sort of want to bring that together um, I could have just copy pasted this bit of code but it's not that difficult so I figured it's nicer if we can just start from an empty page um, so how do we make a square in any number of dimensions? Well, we're going to start by just creating the correct number of points. So that's 2 to the d, where d is the dimension that you're in. So that's 4 points for a square in 2 dimensions, 8 points for a cube in 3 dimensions, and so on. Then we'll just give them some numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, and then we'll convert those numbers to binary. And then when you do that, you might note that you can actually just use that as coordinates. So you basically use one bit for each coordinate axis. Um, and this always works. So in 3D, it will give you the correct edges, the correct corner points that you expect. The edges that I've drawn here now are just all the possible edges. So all the lines that connect all of the possible point pairs. Um, and of course, we don't want these inner edges. So we just want really the outer edges for a square. And the same goes for a cube. We don't want any diagonal edge. We just want the straight edges. And you can easily recognize the straight edges because they only differ in one bit. So all of the diagonal edges, they differ in two bits, um, and the straight ones don't. So we need a good test to do that. And uh, the test to do that is this old school bit fiddling trick where you XOR the two numbers and then end it with a decrement. And if that's zero, then they're exactly one bit different. All right, so now that we know how to do that, let's uh, actually do it. Um, we're going to store the number of dimensions that we're working in as a global variable. Uh, then we're going to create a PGA of that dimension. And we're going to immediately start by creating our points. So we start from an array of 2 to the dimension of D. And then we take those guys, or rather their index, and we convert that to binary. And actually, if we, I can show you what we're doing. So we've converted it to binary, but these guys um, are missing the, the leading digits here. So let's add those in by just saying, uh, take some zeros and then slice it back down to the dimensions. So now we get this one and now we can convert that to little arrays by splitting it on the empty string. And that gives us this, and we might actually want to subtract 0 0.5 here from all of the numbers so that our uh, square or box will be centered. Um, and then, of course, these are just coordinates. We need to convert them to PGA points. And so to do that, let's take the origin and then take our point and multiply that with our coordinates at least multiply that with some of these basis factors and that should give us PGA points and then of course at this point we could actually graph them so let's do that too these are our points let's make them a bit bigger and I'm probably going to want bigger edges later on too. So the edges, we still need to select them out. For that, we say consider all box points A and consider all box points B. 
And then we're going to ask a question and we might return zero or the edge between A and B. And then that's going to be an array of arrays. So we're going to flatten that once. And then the question we're going to ask is, okay, if it's a relevant edge or the condition I was talking about earlier, we XOR them and end that with a decrement. And that should give us the edges, which we can now render instead of the points. Oh, I forgot a map here, like that. So these are the edges, and this will work in three dimensions too. And so this is basically the rigid body we can use to do our physics. Um, all right to the order of business. To do the physics, we need a physics state. The physics state consists out of a motor. Uh, the simplest motor we can think of, of course, is the identity. So let's just do that one. And then what we want is uh, some random rotation to start with. And maybe uh, for now, a little bit of translation too. Um, of course, we also need a differential function on the state. This takes a motor and a velocity by vector, and it returns a new state being uh, minus 0 0.5 times m times b, and then the dual of the commutator product, minus 0 0.5 times the dual of b times b minus b times the dual of b. That's our differential. And then, of course, we would need to use the motor to transform our, our edges. Um, and this needs to be a comma. And we also need to update our state. So let's do a simple Euler integrator. For an Euler integrator, we just do, uh, let's say, 10 steps. And at each step, we update the state by adding in a little bit. Uh, we're going 60 frames per second. We want to be at about seconds. So uh, we have 10 steps and we just divide by 600. Multiply that with the differential function on the current state. And then we have to turn on the animation. and we get our uh, animating cube. So this is just the kinematics part. If we take off the translation, this is what we get. Um, that's, of course, a bit boring. Let's add in some forks. So we'll call that f. It's also a function that takes in a um, current motor and velocity by vector. Um, the first force we'll do is gravity. And to do gravity, we basically just take gravity that is that uh, specific direction. But of course, this direction is in world space. And so we want to uh, move it with the reverse of the motor, which moves it back from world space into the body frame. And then we want to dualize that because we need to return force lines, fork lines. And then, of course, we need to add in the forks, and they just go here. And so now we have gravity, and our box is falling down. Let's also do some damping. Damping is quite easy. Um, it is really just minus zero, some percentage of your current velocity by vector. But again, we have to return it as a force line. So that does damping. It doesn't show us a lot, of course. Let's make. Uh, it a bit more interesting by adding in Hooke's law. For Hooke's law, we will first need an attachment point in the world space. So we just take our last point and let's render that too. So that's our attachment point. And then we have to calculate, of course, Hooke's law. And Hooke's law is, as I promised, super easy. Um, so what we do is we take the attachment point and we move it back into 
the body frame and then we just create a line by using the join operator with the exact same point like this and then of course we need some spring strength let's do something like that and now we have our box on the string maybe we want to render that string by saying okay that is from the world space attachment point to the world space version of the last point and that gives us our string um, so maybe we want to move it up a little bit can do that by just using a simple motor on everything good this is our uh, uh, stringy box as promised so it's about 30 lines of code with lots of space um, and it does everything in a very geometric way so all of these forces are who are uh, lines so hook is really a line by joining two points uh, the damping is a line because the velocity was a, uh, a by vector and we've uh, dualized it so this thing was an, an acceleration type element and we've made it into a force and we did the same thing basically here with with gravity and so this will actually work also in three dimensions and so in three dimensions we actually get a cube and the cube dangles on the string exactly as you expect and of course why stop there because we can also do this in four dimensions and what we now get is a tesseract on a string and as before nothing has changed um, everything is still that same geometric type of treatment even though we are now solving the kinematics and dynamics problem in four dimensions um, so i hope that is a convincing demonstration of uh, the power of pga and i also hope that it makes people realize that there is more to pga than taking existing formulas and translating them into some new elements um, you really need to uh, consider everything that pga has to offer to to get the application at a level where where it becomes a a big benefit to be using this framework okay so i hope everybody had a lot of fun and hopefully um, we'll be talking on the bivector.net discord bye